Call the number. I want to see who gets that so I can harass them. <laughs> now, there's probably dozens and dozens of ways to turn a box. This was my take on a nice simple box. Make one as quick as you possibly can. All right, 470 654. Sit on the other side. Uh oh, there we go. I, I need his name and address. There <laughs> you go. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you. I want to see the finished box. Can you send No, this is the one you want to see. Actually, well, you need you need to do both of this. This is the one that they want to see because if you turn nothing but bowls, you really don't know how to, what a box. You could figure it out, but why sit there and beat yourself up? See a, a demo. Roughing gouge. Yep. <laughs> Want to make this round? Put a just remember this can be as big or as small as you want to make it, you know, to make this box. This is, I'm just trying to give you the principal workings of it. In fact, I'm going to do something similar to this. First, make it round. Here again, <coughs> before you go too far, put your tenon on there, because I'm going to hold this in the chuck. You get a, 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 an end like this, true it up. Here's my tenon. Cool. Frank, we're gonna make these six inch beads of third boxes, uh, in grain boxes. Actually, whatever I just happen to whatever I pick up, you know. I make a jewelry box and that side grain, that's about seven or eight inches. And that this this happened to be a piece of walnut that I had laying there, so I just made it end grain. So. What'd you make yours out of? End grain or side grain? Now, the, the side grain that you're talking about, yeah, now that, I'm getting ready to say that. If you do, this is end grain, it's not going to move as much. If you do use side grain, I would suggest you rough the thing out, the top and the bottom, put them in a place, and give them time to, to be rid of all the little stresses that you took out of it. I didn't forget that. A set of calipers. Nope. Okay. I'll guess at it. Where's my piece that's gonna I'm gonna use for the top? 
Oh, yeah. <coughs> okay, I've got enough room there. Okay. I'm also going to put just a little foot on it. I don't like things that just sit flat down on the table. Just a little foot like that. I'm okay with the bottom. Let me see the top. With a little flat area. If I were you, before this next part, I I put a bid in all those, all those easy wood tools. No, because when they see how this is done, everybody that don't have a set is going to want a set. <laughs> no, no, he, he he's a piece wood man. He doesn't make anything out of solid wood. What do you call it? Chunk wood. You guys shouldn't even let him in the meetings anymore. Any, 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 I don't know if he's changed, but he makes them all using a belt, using a sand. Yeah, yeah. A lot of the design so that, that's what happens he played around it and won a prize for one of them and that's that's all he knows how to do yeah but that one only had just a few pieces probably three or four hundred no he had one that had a whole bunch of pieces but I, I figure people like him you guys know Harvey the basket illusions there's, there's, those guys, people have problems. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's right, I'm pretty true. Sure. Here again, the first thing you want to do is true up this edge. Chewing up means flattening. I just came up with an easier way yet. You got a bid on those easy wood tools yet, guys? <laughs> Since I got this, I might as well use it. No, no, let's see. I, I, I can get it right. Pretty good. 
middle of a zero. If this was wet wood, you'd have to keep backing this out. Otherwise, the heat from this, the friction would make that a swell. Huh? We'll just have to, that's as far as that one's going to go. I don't have the extension with me, but I could do this like you normally do a bowl. Go to this. This works better. The easy wood tool. That was a square. Get in there with the round a little bit. Bevel? There's no bevel on this thing. It's, no, it's not bevel. This is, you, you're cutting on that just that edge. Okay. That's why you need sandpaper. If, yeah, if, that's all, that's all this is. High price, carbide very, very scraper. carbide scraper, that's all. And the thing is, you get more than four inches over tool rest, you need four feet of handle to control the thing. Another half an inch. See, you can hold it up where the tip is down, it's fine. It's when you do this, it'll eat your lunch. sound is the, it's the wood getting thin. Okay. Where are you going? Where are you going? Yeah, about a quarter of an inch.
Just a hair more. I got a little pimple in there. Clean up the sides. with that because I'm going to leave the foot on it. Walnut. Somebody's allergic to walnut besides me. If you were going to sell that piece, Frank, what would you do to finish the inside? The little bubble? No, the whole thing. Leave it as is, sand it. Oh yeah, I'd sand. Oh yeah, definitely. This is this is just the the roughed out piece. I sand everything. No, I wouldn't leave it rough. Unless I was gonna flock it. Drive center. I got. I just. I had. I was looking for it and didn't have it in my brain. So even if I looked at it, I wasn't going to see it. Oh, yeah. What's that? <laughs> you don't understand that. Okay, I understand. How does that chart go? You know, 100% of your time in the shop. Thirty of it's working. Seventy percent of it's looking for those tools you last had Put a ten tenon on this end. The tenon is going to be the top. Usually you try to pick up uh, a nice figured piece of wood for the top.
It's a piece of dry, dry ash. A little bit smaller. Secret parts coming. Secret parts coming up in a minute here. What did I do? Okay, took that off. Uh, yeah, I think I to do. I didn't put a dovetail on here, but it will hold. Momentarily till I get this flat. You have a decision whether Ooh. I forgot. Oh, Jesus, did I forget? Okay. I'm about to just take all that away without measuring. Good to God. <laughs> Look, Ma, no hands. Sure, I don't make a mistake. Use that as a jam, Chuck. That little hole where you first put it between centers, on it, almost any piece you're working on, that's the last thing to go away.
Now this is one of those places where I could come along and just, since I bought Harvey's beading tools, I could just put beads on this thing all the way around. Okay. That's a fit, okay. I can sand that. Okay, now. I want to make sure I go in parallel to the bed of the lathe. A couple of decorative rings here. One more so it looks like I did intentionally. One way is quoted as saying that if you get two teeth on the chuck in the wood, unless you get a catastrophic failure, it should hold. So I've been clamping down all before. I made this just a little bit bigger. So now I'm going to expand out hold that so I can finish the top. Now I can come back just momentarily because I am going to take some nice sizable chunks. I can clean up the top just a little bit. You made it, you can decide what size. Knob you want on it.
if this was one of the <coughs> beads of courage box, this would, you'd probably make a little indention there for your that little ornament that's supposed to go in the middle. Because I want to sand this, and it's better holding. Gosh. Okay. Now, isn't it better since you saw one made as opposed to going out, hitting your head against the wall and says, oh, how do I hold this? How do I do this? Okay. Any questions? Thank you very much, Frank. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Oh, we, we did good. We got out. Got out.